Jeff, uh, just in your in your efforts to, to tighten up defensively, it's how much of it is uh, reducing the number of rush chances against, and what are some of the keys to, to limiting those opportunities? Well, that's a huge part of it. Um, probably the two areas of rush chance against in, in your uh, in, you know in your uh, D zone coverage. Uh, the the biggest factor in the rush chance against for us certainly last night, but but probably through the course of the season is. Uh, managing the puck, not making hope plays, um, living another day when it's uh, when, when when you don't have a play to make. Um, you know, I thought we'd been, as I said last night, making progress in that area. I thought we had done a much better job over the last two weeks of seeing plays and making them, and not igniting people's rush. What happens when you turn the puck over? You, you ignite the other team's rush. And last night we ignited their rush way too often. Whether it was from the ozone, uh, you know, kind of throwing pucks to slot, hoping for plays, or whether it was turnovers on our rush that then result in rushes the other way. So that's the number one area to, to fix that. And uh, I know uh, Ron is not going to do that anytime soon, but just having him out on the ice there and look like he was uh, doing a little bit of shooting and stick handling. It just how is he progressing in that way. Uh, he's progressing. You know, he's, he's making progress. And, and uh, uh, you know, the next step was to be, you know, come out and be part of the part of the team and the team skate both him and Stetch. And so, I think there's a mental side of that that uh, is extremely important for those guys. You know, it's lonely when you're just doing stuff on your own and, and boring and frustrating. And, and so, you know, for Brianna and really for Stetch too, I mean, they've been doing it a long time. So for them to both join practice, that that's a big boost for them. Uh, gives them energy in their rehab. And I think that's important. And uh, um, Bryce was back, but it didn't look like he had one of the nets today. Is he still going to need a couple of practices before getting back in there? Yeah, I don't anticipate Bryce playing either game this weekend, just trying to get him get him back going. Thanks. Yep. Max Bowman. So does Ron have a full shooting clearance or just kind of partial? Or I uh, no, I think he's got full shooting clearance, I believe. You know, the the the... the sports science and training staff kind of dictate that to him. So they, they've had those discussions. Discussions, um, but I think he's got full shooting clearance here. Yeah. On Pittsburgh, they always kind of seem to, they've always had Crosby and Malkin for the year, but they seem to find really good contributors that can play off the line. Well, why do you think they've been able to do that for the last decade? Well, I would start by by seeing Crosby and Malkin. So when you when you get a chance to play with a with a great player, it, it a lot of times exponentially makes the guys around them better. Um, now, I would also say though that that's not to discredit the guys around them. Those guys are good players. They they you know they were able to find some real good players, uh, you know that that have kind of filled into those spots and done done an excellent job. Especially the ones that have been there consistently. You know, like a Rust and a Gensel, and, and those guys are really good players in their own right. So. Um, you know, it's, it's just kind of a combination of both, I guess. Um, but I do think, you know, like superstars generally elevate the players that, that they're on the line with. And then certainly I think, you know, Crosby and Malkin have done that. Now they've had success without those guys too. You know, certainly when one of them's out, they still seem to have uh, tons of success. So, um, you know, they've been an impressive, uh, impressive franchise for a long time. Yeah. Wayne St. James. Hi, Jeff. <clears throat> uh, do you anticipate Jakob? Being able to start practicing with you guys before because the break starts what next week right next after the LA game. Um, well, I practice today. But in a non-contact, I mean, uh, in a oh, contact. in contact, yeah. he won't contact. He won't be in contact before the break. No. Okay. He'll be in so, non. He'll be in non-contact for a while. Okay. Um. So so the kind of schedule with him is still what you've been saying all along. Like hopefully mid February, maybe he can. He, be in full contact practice and and then go from there is that uh, that's what we're hoping um you know he'll have a doctor's appointment i think mid-february ultimately the the surgeon dictates when he's ready and um you know i i don't know more than that uh, and there's no way to know until he has that follow-up appointment and the surgeon says yeah it looks like you're ready for contact or you're not and, and what we want to do is uh i guess two two different areas one um, you know, get him as ready as possible for when he is able to get contact so it doesn't take as long to get back to, I think, keep his spirits up by practicing with us. So, um, you know, both those things we're trying to accomplish right now. But, you know, being out there today, while exciting for him and for us and for, for everybody, uh, it doesn't change the timeline. He's still, you know, we'll see. I mean, we get to that mid-February and it could be another month. I, I don't know the answer to that. It's, it's going to, we're going to have to wait and see. And do you allow yourself to think about uh, when he does come back where 
I mean, if you have a full lineup where he fits or <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, things, as we always say, change very quickly. Who knows what? Yeah, I, I haven't spent much time planning that part of it. You know, I think going into a season when you get a lot of time in the offseason, you kind of go through different kind of uh, looks at what your lineup would be. But now for me, it's, it's it, you know, as you know, we're just we're really focused in on the Pittsburgh game and the guys that are available for that game. And when he comes back, we'll see what our lineup looks like. You don't know what's going to happen, uh, uh, you know, in terms of injuries and all that stuff. So um, I know I know when he does come back, if he's at if he's a hundred percent, which he will be when he comes back, um, he's a dynamic player, and and hopefully you know when that happens, he can he can add to uh, to our team for sure. But uh, you know in the meantime, we're just focused on the guys we have, which uh, which are certainly a good group that's good enough to win tomorrow night. Leslie, just you mentioned it yourself, but um, Pittsburgh and Toronto back to back. I mean, they're teams that like to like to get into to scoring they're they're so as you call it high, high octane like what what do you what do you have to do to try to contain that beyond i guess starting with managing the puck well playing smarter yeah just playing smarter uh being more committed to the to the defensive side of the puck uh being more committed to to uh you know and the balance for for us is is we we want to we want to be able to make plays. We can make plays. We got to live another day, and we're gonna when we have to live another day, and that's a balance that we're still learning. And and so you know, ultimately, um, you know, I think we we had it graded out like twenty one chances against last night. We, we we can't do that against any team, uh, but certainly you can't do it against Pitt or or Toronto and have a chance to win. You you because you're not going to outscore those mistakes. So. Um, you know, as I said to our guys, like, I think we had taken steps in the right direction uh, leading up to last night's game. And I thought we took a giant leap backwards, but that doesn't mean, you know, you don't put your feet on the ground today and start taking those steps back forwards. Thank you. Ken yeah. Colton. Varan is pretty self-evident, Jeff, but then, but Stetch too. I mean, you could have, I mean, there's been nights you really could, you've kind of missed the versatility and the grit that he's brought to the lineup too, haven't you? Well, and it, it just adds more accountability, you know, when you have another guy that that's there that that uh, can certainly step in and do anyone's jobs. Um, you know, just again, it adds the accountability. I think uh, when you have depth in your roster, so uh, I mean, for him personally, you know, it's uh, it's hard. It's hard to be out that long. So it, it was good to see him out there. He's a he is a competitive person, very competitive, wants to win, wants to do it right. Uh, um, and can add, add to, to any lineup in the league, uh, to be honest with you. He's a good player. So um, certainly to have him back in the mix would be a, would be a positive. Hey, Jeff, just going back to Pittsburgh for a second, their core, I mean, with, you know, the th three big guys they have, their Crosby, Malk, and Latang, just the careers they've had, the impact they've had on the league. It seems like they're all pretty good citizens, obviously, too. Just speak to what, you know, they've accomplished over there for that organization. Um, yeah, you know, I, I don't know any of them personally, so I can't totally speak to them as, as persons, but but I can tell you, you know, certainly from afar, whether it's coaching against them or being a fan of the National Hockey League, um, they've, they've been amazing. Um, they've, they've really done amazing things, uh, um, you know, and, and steered that organization to success for such a long period of time. And, and you know, when you have those special, uh, those special athletes who are uh, so highly skilled, but yet so highly competitive and, and, and willing to do everything it takes to win. Um, that's when you go through these stretches where, you know, your, your culture becomes so good that everybody that comes in conforms and you just continue to win. And, and, uh, and, and they've done that. They've got really good coaching staff and, um, you know, it's just been an impressive, uh, certainly an impressive run for them. I don't know how much more can be said, but just, just one last one on Crosby. I mean, is there anything more about him I don't know. I mean, anything that really stands out in your eyes about him as a player or whatnot? I think his commitment to play both sides of the puck, you know, and, okay. and he's a highly, highly skilled player who, who is extremely strong in his skates and, and can do it a lot of different ways and makes a lot of other people better and is extremely competitive, but, but he plays a complete game and that's why they've won so much. And when your best player plays that complete game, you can demand it of everybody else. And, and, um, and that's where I think it just drives all those players that go in there to ultimately have great success because they do it right, you know, and, and um, certainly he's, he's been, uh, it, it's a, he's a good example for, you know, any young skilled player in the league of what it takes to, to, to build, to be uh, a guy who's going to build a winning type team. Good stuff. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. All right. Those are all the questions we had today for coach Blasher. Thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks.